Hey guys, welcome to the Chroma Air page. Today we're going to be showing you a few different airbrushes and how they perform. Before we dive into the breakdown for each of these airbrushes, we wanted to let you guys know that they were all tested using the same conditions. We used a powerful 110 liter per minute compressor. The paints that we chose were very fine and thin and didn't end up causing any clogging issues with any of the brushes. And lastly, all of the brushes were sprayed over heavy paper. So again, all the variables were held consistent with everything we did today. The first airbrush that we tested was the GSI Creos PS270 with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. This is a really high quality airbrush made in Japan and it feels solid as soon as you pick it up in your hands. We like that it offers a wide variety of spray patterns from tiny fine lines to thick round spray covering large areas quickly. This is super efficient, so for anybody covering lots of space using bigger projects, large background work, this is a good brush for you. The only thing we didn't like was the cleaning process with this airbrush because it has a small nozzle, as all Japanese airbrushes do, but this makes it easy to break when installing after a full cleaning. The overall score for this airbrush is very high, especially for the price point of around $100. The next brush we tested was its cooler brother, the GSI Creos PS770 Custom with a 0.18mm nozzle. This airbrush has a lot of features which are all fully functional. Specifically, we like that the trigger tension is adjustable, the air regulator under the paint cup works very well, and the trigger control is superior. Something that really stands out with this airbrush are the fine lines that it produces, but at the same time we felt like it was limited to only fine lines. The previous model, the PS270, had almost the same nozzle size, but it functioned with much wider variety, if you will. It sprayed a lot wider, whereas this one was limited to fine lines, as we mentioned. The PS770 would be recommended as a secondary airbrush for fine detail work, whereas if you need background work or you're working on larger projects, you're definitely going to need a primary brush that does better at spraying wider patterns. Next is the legendary Infinity airbrush made by Harder and Steenbeck and as soon as you pick this brush up you can feel the German design and the manufacturing quality. This is really a piece of art and it's almost as if it knows exactly what you want to do. We used the Createx Wicked Paint for this test and we actually didn't have any clogging issues even though we were using a 0.15mm nozzle which is the smallest nozzle on the market. This airbrush is extremely easy to use and clean and we like the fact that the nozzle sets and paint cups are interchangeable and you can even change this brush into a heavy duty sprayer with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle set and a 50 millimeter gravity cup milliliter i'm sorry however this all does come with the price from everything we tested today this is the most expensive brush and that could be considered a negative depending on how you look at it now a model from one of the oldest airbrush manufacturers out there we tested the pache vision with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. This is a brush that's made in the USA. It's well built and comfortable to use. Featuring a versatile spraying range from tiny lines to a pretty wide pattern, the air regulator works perfectly. And the one thing that we will say is that it does have a little bit of a different character than the Japanese airbrushes, but you will get used to it pretty quickly. It comes with a specific air connector fitting size though, so you can't use it with a standard 1 8 inch air hose without an adapter. Now something to take note of is that this adapter is usually not included with the airbrush, so keep that in mind when buying. You're either going to need to buy an adapter for the correct fitting size or buy a hose that's made to fit the diameter of this Pache Vision airbrush. Next in line we have the Badger Extreme airbrush and we think they call it extreme because there's no needle protection. Uh, we like that the needle tip is easily accessible so that you can remove dirt and paint or whatever might be clogging it. And we would recommend that this is probably more of a experienced user airbrush as we doubt we're going to be giving this to our beginners simply because of the bare needle tip. Overall, it's a good airbrush with precise control and an ability to make fine lines as well as beautiful gradients. The air regulator doesn't work too well on this airbrush and we would recommend keeping it wide open all the time. Some effort is required for disassembly but overall the cleaning process was pretty easy and quick. The last brush that we tested today was the Sotar airbrush and we've actually heard a lot of good things about it, mostly for scale modelers. So the expectations were pretty high, however it didn't really meet all of them. This is a very light airbrush with a comfortable grip and something interesting is that the needle can be removed from the back with the handle on, which is the quickest needle out we've ever seen. 
Trigger control felt pretty rough though, and it takes some time to get used to. It does spray nicely, but it's a little sharp on action, and that's what you can see from the picture here. It came out with the most contrast out of all the other images, and it's a little too dark. Brushing two to three more pictures with this brush would most likely be enough to get used to the trigger control and do a better job. That's all we have for today. Let us know if this was useful for you guys, if you needed any other information. In the meantime, we're going to continue making other tests and videos for other airbrushes. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think. See you next time.